Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome on everyone. This video I'm going to do some form of a review or certainly my thoughts on the Sealy AB932 airbrush. This is the suction feed one. So the first thing I'm going to say is why have I chosen Sealy? Um, I did a search around for airbrushes. Uh, there, especially if you go on eBay, there are literally tons of different unbranded types. Sealy is a UK company, which is why I decided to go for those. Now I've already took most of the stuff out of the box because I have been having a play with this, but you get basically a cardboard sleeve over the back listing what's there in the box. This is the box. It's quite a nice stable box, but I think once you've probably got this set up, you're probably never going to have it back in the box. So in the box, there's a spanner for tightening up and undoing a nut or two actually on the airbrush you get one of these 22 cc pots with a solid lid and you also get one with a suction lid and obviously i'll not put that back in the box because it's full of liquid there's also the what they call the thimble cup which again pushes on the same way now the things i have took out the box it probably doesn't show very well, but I have a little bracket on here which you can hang the airbrush on. To me, it's ideal because when you're not using the brush, sort of between when you're using the brush and not using the brush, you can put it somewhere. And especially when you've got that on, or, or more so the thimble, which I haven't actually used yet, at least it's got somewhere to stand. Now, this is the brush itself, and just a little cap which goes over the nozzle there. You get a reasonable length of pipe i think it's about one and a half meters there so it's it's a reasonable amount it screws onto the bottom of the airbrush there no problem there's a i believe there is a o-ring in there to stop the air leaks now the other end you also in the box get this adapter which is one end screws into the bottom of the pipe as normal with the normal thread and the other end is an ordinary size thread for most compressors. I believe it's something like quarter inch or something like it's classed as. And all I've done is I've bought the quick release option so that I can put it straight onto my airline. One thing I will say is certainly when I deal with most air products like this, I will therefore try and make sure that all the joints are as airtight as possible and I haven't had to do it actually on this pipe because there is o-rings at each end but certainly on this adapter where it goes into my quick release uh, option on here i've actually on the thread put ptfe tape i think the maximum air pressure on this should be about 30 psi for which i've got my regulator set at 25 psi which is two bar operation of this is very very simple you it's all just done on this lever here. You just basically push down for the air to come through. At that point, I've got air coming through. And as you pull the trigger back, it's when the suction comes from here. Now the little glass pots fit on there nicely. This one I'm a little bit, um, I was a little bit confused about because it fits on there fine, but you've got it at an angle. So you can't really, you don't really want it spun around to the front because obviously if you have it like that all your liquid's going to pour at the front and you can't really have it right the way around to the back um, because again this pipe is in the way so you've got to have it in there stuck to one side the only downfall on this it's an open cup hence why it's called a thimble uh, so you are more at risk of spilling it which again is why it's important to probably have some of the bracket hung up somewhere so that if you're using this for a little bit need to put it down you've got somewhere you can hang it straight away so the the, the second glass bottle here with the closed lid it's a little bit of disappointment really i would have rather have had the suction opening on both of them like this and worry about if i had to cover this up rather than having a solid lid on there because if i decide to take this off and swap between bottles I've probably really got to clean all this out anyway. Now, I've never used an airbrush before today. Uh, I had a little play out here earlier. I got a piece of walnut, uh, which you can see that's what the walnut was like. It was very, very punky. All I've done is just turned, I suppose, this little type of hollow form vase, whatever you want to call it, sanded up to 600, and I used the airbrush on it. The way I used to do this before was I would literally just use an ordinary little paintbrush to put it all on. You'd find that you can get a lot of blotchy areas 
whereas with the airbrush it's a lot more controlled and you can get in more even coverage over the whole thing and i've got a piece of silver birch here on the lathe which i've just trued up a bit still got bits of the bark on it uh, so i can sort of give a demonstration of how the airbrush is and how easy it is to use this is the piece of silver birch i've got on the lathe and as you can see, I've got bits of bark there. I've got where the bark is slowly going through there. And I've got some bare wood as well. So it probably does give a good example. It's not, it's only, I've only done it with the rough and gouge. So there are a few grooves on there, which will hopefully show up when we put some color on this as well. Now to give you a bit of a comparison and another reason for the airbrush, if anybody's ever used a spray tin of paint, they'll realize that even if I want to spray something like this, usually you're holding the tin a good, probably about 12 inches away to try and get a fairly even spray over everything and so that it doesn't go heavy onto the piece with all the runs. And the consequence of that then is a 12 inches away like this, I'm getting a spray area probably like that and bits of spray coming out even, even further. So it's not great control and you do need a lot of space. And there are lots and lots of videos on YouTube of people using airbrushes, doing artist work and everything like that, which will give you a good demonstration of how well you can actually use these. Now for anybody who wants to see this particular one in use on a lot of good examples, Stuart Farini, I believe has several of these, which he does use a fair bit. So certainly to go and have a look at his channel, I'll put links below. As I say, I've only got wa walnut crystals in there, which is a water-based mix. And you push it on the bottom there. It's always good to have uh, a board or something that you don't want to spray on to do your test on. So if I basically just push the trigger down, I'm getting air come out. There is no liquid coming out there whatsoever. At the moment I pull the trigger back, there you go. Hopefully you can see it's appearing there on the on the bit of wood. And that's how easy it is to use. And I've got a, a back at a distance like this, so it's only coming out fairly lightly, but I was still having to move it around a fair bit to get that large area there, which is a good probably two inches wide. And I've held the piece back probably three or four inches. So it has a very, very sort of directional use on it. So I can just show you, for example, here, if I put the so this is where you have to be careful to start with, which is why you start off your work where you can get your runs. But hopefully you can see there, I'll just go lightly. Got a lot more control over which areas I actually want to spray on. Certainly a lot more control compared to the large spray can. And you just have to be careful because if you pull it, the trigger back too much, you will get the streaks of water come out. So which is why it's always best to test away from the work to start with. One of the reasons why I wanted this was to get that more even coverage. And it's if you've got a lathe that runs slow speed, I mean, I've only got this running at 150 at the minute. I can actually just start on this, slowly go across the piece and back again. got a fairly even coverage all the way around. Hopefully with that little demonstration you can see how easy it is to use and how much control you have over it. Now when I was searching around for these, the, even this particular model, there was prices all over the places and I believe even on Sealy's website they have a something like a recommended price on there of around about £50, maybe just slightly under. If you go on eBay, this particular kit has, it, I've even seen price on there at least 70 pounds do a shop around i went on the google and in the search bar just put in sealy ab932 click on the search button and then change it to the shopping tab i found one website where i bought it from and i think i paid just under 38 pounds for it delivered and it was delivered within about four or five days but certainly do shop around because you can get a big big difference in price on these now i don't think sealy sell these direct so they are all sold through sort of like resellers. Now the one good thing about this this airbrush as well is that you can go onto Sealy's website, search for the product, and there is a full documentation on there on the product as well as a full breakdown of all the parts 
with the part numbers. So if you want to buy additional parts, should you need them, you've got the part number and you can certainly search and find them straight away. If you are a follower of Stuart, you'll know you'll probably know that Stuart has a lot of airbrushes. And what he tends to do, he tends to keep the one of these bottles attached to each airbrush all the time with one colour in it, which is brilliant because if you've but it soon adds up to how much money you're gonna spend on your airbrushes. I've done a search for these online. Um, I believe you can buy these 22cc ones on eBay from China for a very, very cheap price. Now, I think they come with the suction lid as well, like I've got there on the airbrush. Whether they're an exact fit, whether it's a standard size, I'm not sure. What I have found, though, is that there are two websites that I found in the UK which again I found, I found through the Google search shopping area as well which sell these uh, with like in this format or with the suction lid both are around about £4, £4.50 and I believe both of the websites certainly for the UK here were charging something like £4.50 or £4.95 deliveries. Quickly changing these over um, especially if you've got lots of jars with the actual suction lid on should be fairly quick and easy now if you're using i'd have thought certainly something like that which is water-based you could probably then just spray through your color just on a on a waste bit of board or something and it would probably clean it out and get to the color you want but therefore you're obviously doing a little bit of wastage as well i hope this has been useful to you uh, it is only my own opinion and it's something i've bought myself so there's no, no sponsorship no nothing free of charge certainly if Sealy want to send me a few bits free of charge I'll certainly give an honest review of my opinion on them. Thanks a lot for watching.